Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can share documents on your Synology NAS with anyone in the world. So there's a few different ways that you can do it and we're going to take a look quickly at each of them. But this is going to be mostly for people that want to share documents directly from their NAS to someone else. So what I mean by that is traditionally if you had to share a document with somebody, you might put it on OneDrive, Google Drive, Dropbox, a service that allows you to do that. But the big thing there is that you are using their service to do that. So you have to trust that wherever you're storing your documents that they are managing them properly. Um, and then you're kind of using them as an intermediary. So you're using your NAS to store all your data, and then when you have to share it, you put it on one of those services and share it. Now, this is not to talk you out of doing that. Honestly, for the majority of situations, that is fine. But if you have sensitive information and you want to share it with one individual person or one individual entity, and you want to make sure that it goes directly from your NAS to them, this is a way that you can do that. So I do have written instructions for this in the description of the video, but honestly, it's such a simple process that actually understanding how to do it um, and how you want to share it is more important than actually sharing it. So those instructions are there if you want to check them out, but I highly suggest you just stay tuned and really try and understand the different ways that you can do this. So this is the boring part, but it's very important that you understand the different options that you have. So you have three main ways of doing it. I'm classifying it as three main ways. The first way is that you can use Synology's Quick Connect. The second way is that you can use Synology's DDNS uh, host name that they give you and you can open that port on your router. Or the third way is that you can use a reverse proxy and you can use your own domain name. So we're gonna go quickly through some of the benefits uh, to each of these. But for you, you're going to have to determine which one is best, and you're going to have to implement that based on your needs. So the first way is using Synology's Quick Connect. So basically, Quick Connect allows you to share documents on your NAS. It allows you to do other things as well, but this is one of them. Uh, it allows you to share files on your NAS without having to open any ports on your router. So you can go ahead and you can enable Synology's Quick Connect. You'll have to select the username and you'll have to go through and make sure that the file sharing option is enabled. But in later steps, when we go and actually share that file, you're going to see that it uses a go file URL. So basically, the important thing to highlight with this is that while you don't have to open anything on your NAS, you are relying on Synology to relay this data for you. So Synology has a white paper on Quick Connect, and you're more than welcome to check that out and read that on your own if you'd like. Uh, but the idea behind it is that while you're not opening ports on your router, you are still going through Synology to send that file to someone else. So yes, it is coming from your NAS and it is going to the destination where you're sending it, but in between, it is using Synology servers to relay that information. So the important thing to, to note with this is that you are kind of not in control of your data. When you send a file or a folder this way, you are sending it and technically the entire world can access it. Now, will they access it is a you know different discussion for a different video. But the idea is that they can and you won't be able to limit access using Synology's firewall like you can in the second or third option. So we're quickly going to take a look at those. So the second option is that you can use Synology's DDNS hostname. Uh, for free, you're able to set up a, uh, a Synology.me DDNS hostname. Um, and you can technically open the port on your router to your NAS. So hear me out before you get scared. In order to share a document, you will have to open the DSM port to your Synology NAS. So the HTTPS port, you'll have to open that on your router. So since you have to open that port, it is very important that you implement Synology's firewall and you try and restrict access as much as you can. So I have a video on Synology's firewall and I highly suggest you check that out if you uh, are interested in using this approach because it's very important to understand how Synology's firewall works. So if you think of it this way, if you have to share a file with a friend of yours, you can technically limit access to either his ISP's uh, DHCP range, so that's the external IP address range that they use, or if you want to get even more specific, you can limit it to his or hers IP address, their external IP address, and then they are the only people in the world that can access that data. So yes, even though it is password protected, or if you're using a DSM account, uh, you have to log in, 
it's still protected in the sense that they are the only ones in the world that can access that URL and actually get to the login page. So while on the surface, it might sound scary that you might have to open ports on your router, this is a valid and in most circumstances, more secure way of sharing your data. So that's the second way. The third way basically has all of the benefits of the second option. Um, the only difference is that you're using a reverse proxy so that you're able to use your own domain name. Um, so I have a video on how you can set up Synology's reverse proxy server if you'd like. Uh, but, you know, generally you still want to limit access if you can. Uh, the only difference is that you're able to uh, use your own domain name and you don't have to open the DSM port. You're able to open port 443, which will allow that traffic to occur. So those are the three options that you're able to take. You have to ultimately pick whichever one you think is best for you. Uh, but that's the bulk of this video. The actual instructions are very easy. We're going to get to them in a second. But make sure that you select what's best for you, what's best for your use case, and you can then move on to these next steps. So to share the file, you can log into DSM and then you can open up File Station. From there, you're going to have to navigate to the folder or the file that you want to actually share, and you can right click it and select Share. A new screen will then appear, which is a shared links section. And basically, it's going to have a URL in there. So if you're using Quick Connect, this is where you'll see that Go File link. Uh, but if you're using Synology's DDNS hostname, you'll see your DDNS hostname and your port. And if you're using Synology's reverse proxy server, you'll probably have to copy this URL later and then just change out that DDNS hostname and port, um, or it might even be the IP address and port, um, just with the hostname that you'll be using to access it. At the bottom, you can then enable secure sharing, and this will allow you to either set a password or a DSM user account that can access this file. Um, so basically, when the user gets to the page, they'll either have to enter in the password or they'll have to log in with a full DSM user account. Either option is fine, but it's up to you. Um, you can then select validity period at the top, and you can change the start time, stop time, or the total number of times a user can access the data. So if you want to send the link to somebody, but you don't want them to access it until the next day, or you only want them to access it for 24 or 48 hours or whatever it is, you can modify these settings here. After that, when you select save, it's going to copy that URL to your clipboard. Now, if you send this to whatever user you have to send it to, when they access it and they navigate to that URL, they're either going to have to type in the password that you specified, or they're going to have to log in with the DSM user account. So that's basically how they can access the data and then they can download it. If it's a file, they'll have the option to download the file. Or if it's a folder, they'll be brought to a page that shows all of the information inside of that folder and then they can download whatever they need to. The last thing we're quickly going to take a look at is the shared links manager. So if you go out and you send a bunch of these links, you have to have a section to manage them. So you can select uh, Tools and then Shared Links Manager inside a file station, and then you're going to be brought to all of your links. From here, you can manage them however you'd like. So at this point, you can see that actually sharing the files is pretty easy. It's more important to understand how you're going to expose your NAS and how you're going to send that data to somebody else so that they can access it in the most secure way possible. So hopefully the instructions a little earlier helped. But if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.